Okay, so this is the next video on a geometric series. So unlike arithmetic series, geometric series have uh, arithmetic sequences and series, geometric have three different things we have to worry about. We've looked at geometric sequences and the nth term formula for those. We've looked at geometric series and the summation formula for those. What we now need to look at is what ha happens when we have infinite geometric series and we take a bunch of terms and add them together. So let's think about this geometric series. This is a geometric series, the common ratio is 2. It's doubling every time. So the sum of the first two terms is 3. The sum of the first three terms is 7. The sum of the first four terms is 15. Some of the first five terms is uh, going to be 31. What's happening here? As n gets bigger, the sum is just getting bigger and bigger. This is not helpful. Okay, Why is that? Well, as we looked at last time, this series is not converging. This is a, a divergent series. Why is it divergent? What makes these numbers just get bigger and bigger? Is it to do with the first term? N is changing, so N is, N is not the reason. So it's not to do with the first term, so it must be to do with R. For a geometric series, or sequence, the common ratio determines whether it diverges or converges. So, what type of value of R is going to make the sequence converge? If you answered 0 point something, you'd be right, or you'd be almost right. But it's the right idea. So let's look at this series here. You've got to think, okay, if we were to plot n and the sum so when n is 1 the sum is 4 when n is 2 the sum is 6 so there. when n is 3 the sum is 7 when n is 4 the sum is seven and a half, and so on. If we were to draw this here, we can see that there's some value, looks like eight, might not be, there's some value that this is getting close to as n gets big. Why is that? Well, let's have a look at the formula. So we know the sum is going to be the first term times 1 minus the common ratio, which is a half, to the n over 1 minus the common ratio.
Here, we have a fraction to a power. What happens to that as n gets bigger? Well, the, when n is 1, the fraction is a half, then a quarter, then an eighth, then 1 over 16. This becomes 0. Which means the numerator changes. Becomes 4 times 1. So the sum gets closer to 4 over 1 minus a half. This value that we calculate we call the sum to infinity. And it is in fact the 8 that it looked like my graph was going to. This only works when the common ratio r is between minus 1 and 1. In this case it worked because r is a half. Here it didn't because r was 2. So the formula for the sum to infinity of a geometric series. is the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. When that is true. If this is not true, this is still a formula that you can work out. You can still put numbers into it, but the answer that you get doesn't mean anything. If r is 2 and the first term is 1, we can still put in numbers but the answer we get doesn't mean anything. Now the formula book writes this in a slightly different way. But it means the same thing. This is something called the modulus function and it's what we'll look at in more detail next year. So let's have a look at a couple of the questions from the workbook. Again, you can find that on Moodle. So, we have the series 12 plus 6 plus 3 plus, a half, uh, plus 1.5 and so on. This is an infinite series and it's converging. You can see each term is getting closer and closer to zero. So the total is getting closer and closer to something. We want to find the sum to infinity. So we need the first term, which we can see is 12. We need the common ratio, which we can see is a half. Because we're doing 12 goes to 6 goes to 3. So the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. And that's it. Question two is a little bit more in depth. So let's have a look at this one. We know the second term is 16. And we know the sum to infinity is 100. We want to find the two possible values of r and the first terms that correspond to those. So, oh look, it's a simultaneous equations type question again. So let's think about that. So, the second term. a r equals 16. The sum to infinity, a over 1 minus r equals 100. So we know that a is 16 over r, and a is 100 times 1 minus r. 
Solving these equations simultaneously, we get 16 over r equals 100 minus 100 r. We need to find r, and let's have a look at the question. The question says find the two possible values of the common ratio, which tells us, oh, we need to rearrange this to look like a quadratic, which if we multiply through by r, and then move everything over one side, and divide by two at the uh, divide by four at the same time. We get there. Let's use our calculators to solve this equation. Again, I'm using the graphics calculator because that's what I have to hand. So polynomial, degree two, let's clear that. Okay, so we've got 25 minus 25 plus, oops, plus 4. And we get the two values of r, r4 over 5, and a fifth. We now need to find the corresponding values of a. So when r is 4 over 5, 4 over 5a equals 16, a equals 16, times 5 divided by 4, which is 20. When r equals a fifth, a fifth a equals 16, a equals 16 times 5, is 80. And that's sum to infinity. It's just this idea that if a geometric series is converging, we can work out the total that it converges to. So, textbook questions. We are on exercise 3e which is page 75. Question 1. To 5. Question 8. And 10. Please also attempt the exam questions, which you can access on Moodle, that we've put in the workbook. There are separate videos done for going through those. Okay. Thank you for watching. Next time we'll be looking at the different notation for summations and how we can model using sequences and series.